in this part of the problem, we are trying to verify these two conditions right here. So the first one is showing that the potential, the electric potential is continuous across a boundary. And then also on the second one down here is to show that the gradient or the change in the electric field is equal to uh, this condition right here, which as you'll know, this is actually the, uh, the electric field here. Um, but so if we go back and uh, look at the problem specifically, we're going to have to apply this to a certain exercise that we did where this is a, a spherical charge, a spherical shell uh, of a charge. Here was some sort of charge density sigma, if I can write it right here, and then uh, some radius r, right? And so, of course, uh, in our experience, we've known that the electric field is equal to something that goes like 1 over r squared outside. But on the inside, the electric field is equal to zero. But then we've also known that the uh, the potential on the inside is not equal to zero. The potential on the equal on the inside is actually equal to some sort of constant, right? I'll just put c, and then the potential on the outside is equal to something else. So, but the key is, is that there's a discontinuity when you go across the uh, some sort of boundary condition here for a. Uh, for a shell charge or some sort of boundary here. And then uh, whenever for the electric field, but for the uh, potential, we need to show that is actually continuous. So let's go ahead and mathematically show that's true here. So from the problem, if you go back to the, uh, uh, the, the example problem in the textbook, it gives you two answers for the potential, one of them in terms of Q, the other one in terms of sigma. And since we're gonna have to show that sigma uh, uh, the relationship for sigma in this part of the problem, we'll just go ahead and use the one that's uh, using sigma. And so for the potential on the outside of an electric spherical shell is equal to uh, the radius squared epsilon naught times uh, over r. And we want to show that is, is that actually equal to the potential on the inside, which is, uh, again, a constant. This is what I talked about. See, so this doesn't vary with the distance from the center as you go out, but this one does. It gets smaller and smaller as you get away, and that makes sense. All right, so now we apply the boundary condition. So I'll just put like a, at the at the boundary. At the boundary, uh, R is approximately equal to R. See, as you get closer and closer to this, this little uh, boundary and you evaluate it right when those thresholds meet each other, you'll find that um, this will actually end up equaling to each other. So we have big R here, equal to sigma epsilon naught. Of course, these cancel out. And then we do show that is in fact the case. And then lastly, we'll move on to this next condition we were told to apply to this uh, specific uh, charge configuration. So we'll go ahead and apply the uh, f, uh, the gradient, which is the uh, um, partial derivative in respect to the distance. I think in the example, I probably used z, so I'll just use r since I'll just start using a spherical coordinates where r points uh, r hat points radially outward. So d dr of the uh, potential above, which we just wrote out up up here. We'll just go ahead and throw that down there, which is uh, r squared epsilon naught r. And then this whole thing is going to be uh, given a direction because that's how the gradient works. It's going to be given a direction, so that's why I put a little r hat right here. And then we're going to evaluate it at r is approximately equal, equal to uh, r, right? So we're evaluating it right at the threshold. So we're taking the gradient, but the above means it's right at the threshold right here. And then we're going to go ahead and subtract it from the potential below, the gradient of the potential below, which is right there. So we'll do the partial of the uh, electric potential on the inside, right at the cusp of it. We get It gets a hat. It's a little party hat when we take uh, gradients. And of course, we're evaluating it at R is approximately R. It doesn't really change anything. Now, as you can see right here, we'll go ahead and uh, take care of the constants. So these are all constants, so those, those can move out. Clean it up a little bit. R squared sigma, epsilon naught. And of course, the... Uh, so all that's left is the partial of uh, 1 over r right here, which is equal to negative 1 over r squared. 
Let's give it a hat. And then I'll save this portion for last. Evaluate at R equals, uh, that's approximately equal to a big R, the radius. And then finally, we look at this one right here. As you can tell, this is just all constant. So whenever you, this uh, hits a glob of constants, everything just goes to zero. So we can just go ahead and drop the term. After this next step, we'll bring our constants down. And then now we just substitute r equals big R for this one over r squared. Pull this negative one, one over r squared out here. What happens? Oh, don't forget the hat. It's equal to negative sigma over epsilon naught pointing in the r hat direction, pointing in the direction of the direction normal to the, uh, the surface of the charge. And that's exactly what we wanted to show here.